After a lull, the topic of sending NATO troops to Ukraine has reappeared in the Western press. Following France, Britain has started talking about it again. As former UK Defence Minister Ben Wallace stated, Britain needs to send its troops to help Kyiv. This is what the Daily Telegraph writes. The former British Defence Minister believes that the West should send its military to Ukraine, but not to participate in combat, but to train Ukrainian soldiers, in particular mobilised ones. According to him, Kyiv needs to expand the criteria for mobilisation and recruit as many recruits as possible who will be trained by the West but on Ukrainian territory, which will be much faster and cheaper than transporting them, for example, to the same Great Britain. According to Wallace, the British alone can train 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers to confront the Russian army. The West can train them. Britain alone could train 100 people if it wanted to. We should send our troops to help the Ukrainian army with training and maintenance. Not so that they fight, but so that they can enable the rear echelons to repair the equipment that we have all given them, the former minister stated. He also called on Western countries to increase military aid to Kyiv, thereby helping it defeat Russia. Wallace did not explain how Ukraine would defeat, given the volumes of military equipment and weapons. Recall recently, France has not ruled out sending troops to Ukraine, according to Benjamin Haddad, the French Minister for European Affairs. Paris, along with other NATO allies, have trained over 100,000 Ukrainian troops since the war started and in February, French President Emmanuel Macron said there was no consensus on deploying ground troops to Ukraine, but that nothing was excluded. NATO allies have been trying to provide military assistance to Ukraine, but the presence of boots on the ground in any form could raise fears of escalation. However, Moscow has already portrayed its invasion as a proxy war between Russia and the alliance. The French newspaper Le Monde reported in May that France could send instructors to Ukraine to train its military, following a deal agreed by Kyiv's top commander, General Alexander Syrsky. As a debate rages about whether Western weapons should be allowed for strikes deep inside Russia, Haddad reiterated the French president's position regarding Paris's latest stance on military assistance for Ukraine. President Macron has said on several occasions that we must not exclude anything, and that still applies in particular to training missions. Haddad told German newspaper Berliner Zeitung. France has once again raised the issue of sending Western troops to Ukraine, obviously believing that multi-billion dollar supplies of Western weapons to Kiev are no longer enough. As the German publication Berliner Zeitung writes, French Secretary of State for European Affairs Benjamin Haddad said that his country does not rule out sending ground troops to Ukraine. Haddad recalled the words of the French president who had previously spoken about this, noting that they remain in force. President Macron said we should not rule out anything and that remains true, the official said in an interview with Berliner Zeitung. In addition, Haddad spoke in support of the supply of long-range missiles to Ukraine for strikes deep into Russia. In February of this year, French President Emmanuel Macron did not rule out the possibility of sending troops from Western countries, including France, to Ukraine. At the same time, he added that such a decision could be made, for example, if Russia advances toward Kiev and if the Ukrainian authorities ask for help. Moscow called foreign military personnel in Ukraine to help the Ukrainian armed forces a legitimate target for the Russian armed forces. Let us recall that recently the West has been heatedly discussing Kiev's calls to give it permission to use Western weapons to strike at Russian territories far from the front. For several months, Western countries have been discussing the feasibility of sending their military to Ukraine. However, according to Estonian Prime Minister Kaja Kalas, in an interview with the Financial Times, some countries have already sent their military to Ukrainian territory. Kaja Kalas said this in May. According to Kalas, NATO allies should not fear that sending troops to Ukraine to train its soldiers could draw the alliance into a war with Russia. The Estonian Prime Minister noted that if Russian troops attacked the training personnel, it would not trigger NATO's Article 5 on mutual defence, which states that an attack on one means an attack on all. Kalas said that there are countries that are already training soldiers on the ground, that is, training the Ukrainian army on its territory. According to the Estonian Prime Minister, they do so at their own peril. 
I cannot imagine that if someone gets hurt there, those who sent their people will say, this is Article 5. Let's bomb Russia. This is not how it works. It doesn't happen automatically. Therefore, these fears are unfounded, she said. In addition, she sees no risk of a direct conflict with Russia if the Allies help Kyiv train Ukrainian soldiers on the territory of Ukraine. Russian propaganda does nothing but talk about a war with NATO, so they don't need a reason to do so. Whatever we do on our part, if they want to attack, they will attack, Kalas said. The Russians demonstrated training to intercept Ukrainian sea drones using FPV drones launched from an Mi-8 helicopter. This was noted by the publication Defense Express. The helicopter contains a crew of FPV drones and the UAV itself is launched from the open door of the helicopter. After that, the operator makes a decision to attack the target. Although this solution seems rather simple, it represents a new approach to using FPV drones. In fact, this approach neutralizes the threat that anti-aircraft drones can pose to the helicopter. Let us recall that back in the spring, the Russians published a video in which you can see a Russian helicopter firing at one of the Ukrainian anti-aircraft drones. It shows a short-range air-to-air missile. As the Russian side noted at the time, the drone managed to launch a missile towards the Mi-8 helicopter, but it missed. The FPV drone's flight range significantly exceeds the R-73's launch range from zero altitude. The latter is about 12 kilometers, while the FPV drone's range can reach 20 to 30 kilometers. It should be noted that the Russians have also begun producing their own sea drones. Thus, recently, it was reported about the serial production of a heavy sea drone, which was named Vizier. Its length is 7 meters and its width is 2.5 meters. The drone can reach speeds of up to 45 kilometers an hour and its range reaches about 500 kilometers. Earlier, the Russian Federation presented the Morena 300S unmanned boat, which received a warhead weighing 500 kilograms. It is reported to have a range of up to 500 kilometers and a speed of up to 45 knots. The warhead weighs 500 kilograms. The developers do not disclose other important parameters. The available data suggests that the Russians created this drone for coastal operations. The reliability of the design is a big question for experts, in particular the trailer motor, which is more reminiscent of similar products of the Yemeni Houthis. Overall, the low build quality of the Morena 300S is striking. Perhaps this is due to the fact that it was created in a short time. The boat's appearance can even be confused with the bizarre products of Latin American drug cartels. Among the most interesting solutions is an element similar to the dish from Starlink. Perhaps this is a receiver of another system, stylized as a system from SpaceX.